Hi guys, I'm Rahul from Simply Learn and today we are going to talk about another important Azure service, Azure Data Factory. Now, why should you be interested in Data Factory? Now let's consider a scenario. So here we have two colleagues having a conversation with each other and they say that the data that they're generating from their applications or products is increasing exponentially. Now, considering that this data is coming from a number of different products, it'll be a bit of a task to analyze and store all of this data. So he wonders how they're going to manage that. His friend suggests that they use Azure's Data Factory. Now, what does Azure's Data Factory actually do? First, it stores data with the help of the data lake storage. Now, any kind of data can be stored in the data lake storage. Then you can analyze the data, you can transform the data with the help of pipelines, and you can publish the organized data. You can visualize the data with third-party applications like Apache Spark or Hadoop as well. Now, what exactly is Data Factory? So now let's have a look at what exactly is Data Factory. Now, Data Factory falls under the identity domain of services in the Azure catalog and is a cloud-based integration service. Basically, what it does is it works on your data, it stores your data, it orchestrates and automates the movement or transformation of data. It works heavily on the data that you store. Now, let's see how it actually works or how the flow of its processes are. Firstly, we have the input data set, which is nothing but the data that you have within your data store, the one that you need processed. Then you pass this data through a pipeline. Now, what does a pipeline do? A pipeline basically performs an operation on the data that transforms it, which could be anything from just data movement or some data transformation. Now, data transformation is possible with the help of USQL, some stored procedures or Hive. Now, after this is done, you get an output data set. Now, this output data set will contain data that is in a structured form because it's already been transformed and made structured in the pipeline stage. Then it is given into linked services like Azure Data Lake, Block Storage or SQL. Now, what it does is these store information that is very important when it comes to connecting to an external source. Now, this is, you know, if you wanted an example, you know how in an SQL server, you need to mention the source and destination of your data. Now, for example, consider an SQL server. So you need a connection string so that you can connect to an external device. You need to mention the stores and the destination of your data. This is how the link services work. And finally, you need a gateway. Now, a gateway basically connects your on-premises data to the cloud. So you do need a client installed on your on-premises system so that you can connect to the Azure cloud. And finally, you have the cloud. Here what happens is your data can be analyzed or visualized with a number of different analytical softwares like Apache Spark, R, Hadoop and so on. So all this time I've been mentioning that Data Lake is a very important part when it comes to Azure Data Factory's proper functioning. So now let's talk about what exactly is Data Lake. Now, Data Lake is a data storage or a file system which is highly scalable and distributed. It is located in the cloud and works with multiple analytics frameworks, which is external frameworks like Hadoop, Apache, and so on. So now let's have a look at it. So first you have your output data set, which is data from the mobile, video, web, social media, so much more. It is sent into the Azure Data Lake store and then it is provided to external frameworks like R, Apache and Spark so that they can be worked on. Now, there are two main concepts when it comes to data lake storage. So one of them is storage and the other one is analytics. Now, storage is of unlimited size. It can be petabytes, terabytes, gigabytes and so much more. It stores a wide variety of data. It could be unstructured or structured data and it can store really large files. And another concept when it comes to data lake is analytics. Now, how it works. Now, here are two examples of how analytics works when it comes to data lake. Now, when it comes to analytics, you can monitor and diagnose real time data. For example, data that you're getting from vehicles or buildings. These can be used to optimize how they work, respond to certain events or generate alerts in case something goes wrong. Then you can also identify fraudulent transactions on your credit card or you can identify the current the geographical position of your card. Perhaps monitor how many transactions have been taking place on that card and so on. So now we're going to have a look at how we can use the Azure Data Factory to move data from an SQL database to a blob storage on the cloud. So here's what we're going to do. So first off, to make a database, what you're going to need is software known as SSMS. So you can find it on Google. It's called, you just need to Google it, SSMS. And the first link you can take here, and there you have it. So you just need to click here and download the file. So we, I've already downloaded the file. So basically this is used to create a database 
which we'll be transferring to the blob storage. So this will take about, depending on your computer speed, pretty long or little to no time. I've already downloaded it. The process is very simple. Just directly go on saying yes, yes. And finally, once the installation is done, here's what we're going to do. We should go into the dashboard of Microsoft Azure. We need to create a data warehouse. So we'll go into all resources, create a source, go to database and select SQL data warehouse. There we have it. Now it's very important that you remember the names of the service of everything that you're going to write here because each of these become very important later on. So I've already set up a possible set of names. YouTube, it's free trial. The resource is already created. A blank database. The server, we need to create a new one. So we'll name it as YouTube server. YouTube admin as the server admin login. The password as All right, the location does not matter. Okay, that's done. Now here, the server is done. And here we need to change how much you want the lowest, I mean, how much computation you want, how much the workload, how important your workload is. So we'll put it at the lowest since we don't require much. We'll apply. The rest is normal and create. So now we're creating an SQL data warehouse. So we'll wait. So now the deployment is done. So we'll go to the notification and, and go to the resource here. Now this is done. So we'll go to the SSMS, which I've already opened here and then go here and copy this, paste it here as your authentication login, which details we have already stored here, which is admin YouTube admin and the password, which is also given there. Right. Go to options. We go to the database name, which is YouTube. Everything else is there. We need to change it to TCP IP and connect. We sign in. We'll add the password. Can okay, we're going to sign in now? All right. So now that that's completed, you can see that this is what will pop up. So this is the name of the server we've given, as you saw earlier. We go to databases and here you have the YouTube database that we just created. Right click this and add a new query. I already have a code for this program. It's a very simple program. So copying and pasting this. Now, If you need the code for this program, let us know in the comments below. It's very simple. What we're doing is creating a table called demo tab with first name. Clark Kent and last name is Bruce Wayne and uh, the table that's created will have these two rows. So now we're going to execute this. And there you have it. Two rows have been affected. So now let's have a look at our table. Mm -hmm. Execute this line and there you go. The table's here. So now that this is done, we're going back into Azure back and we need to create a storage account. So that's where the story, where the blob storage is going to happen. So we're going to storage accounts and click on add. So here it's a free trial resource group is YouTube storage account name is the store. That's all. Okay. Here's performance is standard general purpose we can do locally since we don't need it to be very reliable, at least for this one. Advanced is fine. View and create. That's done and we create. Now we'll wait for the deployment to finish. And that's it. The deployment is done. So we'll go to the resource and go to blobs. So this is where the storage is happening. We need to create a blob. Simply blob. Which does not exist. And okay. It has been created. Now for the next bit, we need to create the data factory now. So we go to all services, search for data factory. We press add. So here we'll free trial use existing, which we have YouTube, East US and create. So now we've created a new data factory. Now we'll wait while it's being deployed. 
So now it's created. So we'll go here and here we click on copy data. And this opens up. So we'll name it. Now description run once now. Once now. Okay. Right. So we press next. So we need to connect to a data source. So so what you need to do is select a secure Azure SQL data warehouse. So one second, go to previous. Here we select Azure SQL data warehouse. Go here, search for source, Azure subscription, free trial, play YouTube server, and the database is YouTube. You also need to provide your username and password. I've saved it here. YouTube admin. Okay, now we can select the table which is demo tab. Next. Next. And now for our destination. So, where are we going to connect this to? We're going to Azure Blob Storage. Next. Destination. Azure Subscription Free Trial. And Simply Store. Now we need to name our, name our storage path. Next. All of this can be passed on. So here's what we're doing. We're copying whatever is inside this to the Azure Blob Storage. That's what's happening right now. All of that is set and next. It's validating and we'll wait now. It's registering connections, creating database, and in the end it's creating a pipeline. So you can monitor the pipeline from here if you feel like it. Now here's what we're going to find. So here's the here's a visual representation of what's happening. It's being copied into the blob storage. Now let's have a look if it's actually worked out. We go to our database, we'll go into storage accounts, simply store, go to blobs. You've created a new one and there you have it so based on the container that you've named there it's created a new one here so actually I had earlier created the name called simply blob but as you can see here as long as you name a container it will create a folder inside which you will find your particular thing that you copied and that's it you've copied data similarly you can do a number of multiple operations on this container on the on the pipeline you just created with the data factory and that's that. And with that, we've reached the end of another video. I hope you guys found this informative and helpful. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.